By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a sweet match because I'm going to show you my new living plane deck, Timmy's Plane. It's green and it's blue. It is still a work in progress, but it is coming to the, you know, the finalization stage. Is that a word, finalization? I believe it is, I think it is. Anyway, I'm playing with that dead deck today and I'm taking on Yoop, who's playing his signature deck, Urnum on Ice. So it's a very strong deck that I'm testing my Timmy's playing deck against. So I'm looking forward to that. Now, before I start with the deck deck, I've got beautiful deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that as always, you can also skip that section, go straight to the actual match. The easiest way to do so is by checking the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the action. And now I am going to start with the deck decks. I'm gonna start with the deck of my opponent, Yoop. Let's have a look at Urnum on Ice. And here we see the deck of my opponent, Urnum on Ice. Now the, um, the idea of this deck, you know, we've, we've had it on the channel before, but just quickly gonna explain it. Uh, what you want to do when you play this deck is game one, you want to ramp up. I mean, turn one. So you want to play a Lanawar Elves or maybe a Mox, maybe both, maybe a Soul Ring, whatever. But you want to ramp up and then in game, uh, or sorry, I keep saying game, but I mean turn. In turn two, you want to play your Ice Storm, right? So that way you're ramping up, you're destroying a land on the side of your opponent and you're really winning that tempo game. You're like two mana up in turn two, right? And then turn three, you wanna start throwing your bigger creatures onto the board. So you've got your Urn of Jinns, obviously, you also have your Sarah Angels. Then you have some smaller stuff that works really well against those annoying factories. And those are the Argovian Pixies. He's also playing with two factories of his own, by the way. And then of course, when you go so quickly, you need some card draw in your deck. So there are two Sylvan Libraries here to help him draw extra cards. There's a Jam Day Tome. Sylvan Library in this deck, you wanna use quite aggressively because it's really those early turns where you wanna go the distance, where you wanna win the tempo game. So you just quickly wanna destroy a lot of lands of your opponent, you wanna bring out your bigger creatures, and then from there on out, you kind of wanna get some extra card draw going and control the game with your white control package. So you can see here the disenchants, the swords to plow stairs, and you know, if it all goes wrong, if it all goes south, you still have that balance that can get you back in the game, and of course balance, it always works quite well in a deck with all the five Moxen because Balance doesn't care for the artifacts and the Moxen are a super cheap way to kind of empty your hand. And that way you can get a scenario with Balance where you can use it as a Wrath of God, uh, an Armageddon, and a Mind Twist. And that's why Balance is so, so sick. So I hope that's not going to happen against me. Anyway, this is the deck of Yoop Urnum on Ice, his signature deck. He's constantly tweaking. So this is the last photo I have of his deck. Maybe he's made some changes. So please forgive me for that. If we see some other cards, we're just gonna, you know, have to wait and see because I never know what kind of little tweaks he's made. Um, and now we're going to have a look at my deck. So that's Timmy's Plane. Let's take a look. And here we see my deck, Timmy's Plane. So Timmy's Plane is built around two cards, Living Plane, two green and two to cast for an enchant world from Legends that says all lands are now 1-1 one, one creatures. That means they also have summoning sickness. So you can still tap them for mana, but when you put a land into play, you cannot tap them at once. And this is very important because I wanna combine it with the Tim, the Protocol Sorcerer. And what the Protocol Sorcerer does, I can tap it to deal one damage to any target. So I can start pinging off the lands of my opponent. And uh, you know, my opponent simply cannot get any mana out of lands anymore when the Living Plane's on and I've taken care of all the lands because the new lands that he's gonna play have summoning sickness, right? You get it? Now, of course, there is something like a mana rock, right? We've seen that my opponent is playing with a lot of Moxen. So to kind of deal with that, I am playing with three Crumble main uh, to kind of kill those artifacts. So I'm gonna be very aggressive on the Moxen. The, the, the gist of this deck is really mana denial. And when my opponent doesn't have any mana, I can do whatever I want, right? That's the idea. That's also why I'm playing with four Ice Storm. Now, a nice thing to note about this deck is that I've chosen to play with quite a lot of one-offs. I find that when you're playing with one-offs, it makes your deck quite unpredictable. And in some scenarios, it makes it difficult for your opponent to kind of think of a strategy, like how to sideboard against you. For example, I'm only playing with one Meek Stone, but a Meek Stone can be devastating when you play it in the right moment. I'm only playing with one Simbat, but I am playing Simbat Sylvan Library. So again, at the right moment in the game, it can be devastating for my opponent. But if my opponent is gonna, you know, 
remember that and is going to sideboard against it, there's a big chance he's not going to see it anymore in game number two because I'm simply only playing with one Simbad, one Meekstone. I'm also playing with one Siren Skull, one Giant Growth, one Icy. So just a lot of one-offs. I got a few two-offs as well, like Control Magic. Um, I, I like that. Also for yourself as a player, it's fun to play because you're surprised more often. It's just like when you play Singleton, you know, that can also be quite fun. Um, one card I want to highlight before I I move on to the match because I think this deck is pretty clear what it wants to do is the card Siren Skull. So Siren Skull I find is a super cool card. I love the art. It's an instant. You can cast it for one blue and it says cast this spell during an opponent's turn before attackers are declared. So I want to cast my Siren Skull in the upkeep. So my opponent takes a turn, untap, upkeep, I cast Siren Skull. Now Living Plane's on the table. Now this is what's going to happen. Creatures have to attack with Siren Skull. If they don't attack, they die. It's as simple as that. So in the upkeep, I play Siren Skull. Living Plane has made all the lands 1-1 one, one creatures, so my opponent now has to choose or he's going to attack with his lands, meaning he cannot play anything out probably because he simply has no mana, or he taps his lands for mana in the first main phase. But if he does that, the lands are going to be destroyed because he didn't attack with them. So he's got to choose or play something out and lose a lot of lands or play nothing out, attack with the lands, do nothing basically that turn and probably lose some lands uh, in, in the combat situation, right? Due to unfavorable blocks. So Siren Skull Living Plane, I think is super cool. I'm hoping that I can pull it off and show it to you in the match. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. I'm actually hoping that I can kind of show Living Plane in action and, and working the way it should work with my deck. Maybe even use Control Magic to steal one of the lands of you. That, that would be really fun. I hope that I hope that's going to work. Anyway, um, we talked about my deck. We looked at the deck of my opponent. Now let's go to the match. Game number one, we have Yoop sitting on the left with Urnum on ice. And we've got me sitting on the right with my living plane deck, Timmy's plane. And Yoop starting with a Lanawer Elves. Passing the turn. Let's see what I can do. Can I find a Mox or a Soul Ring ramp up a little as well? Oh, that's even better. A Library of Alexandria. Now I have to hope... Fingers crossed that Yoop doesn't have an Ice Storm. He is playing with four and of course a Strip Mine. So I'm just gesturing the go ahead to my opponent here. Seven in hand and a Loa. This is great for me. Let's see if Yoop has that Ice Storm. Doesn't have a Strip. Playing a Savannah. Tapping the Savannah for another Lanawer Elves. Interesting. So he does not have a Strip. So at least or an Ice Storm, so at least I can use the Loa. Tapping one more. I wonder what he's going to do here. There's a Soul Ring. Okay, so does he have an Ice Storm? Was it too quickly? No, he does not. Attacking with the Lanawa. For a moment there, I thought it would tap Lanawa Elf Soul Ring for an Ice Storm. So this feels pretty good. Going to draw an extra card at the end of his turn. So I'm now at nine cards in hand. Let's see if I can... Play something out. Also playing with Lanawer Elves myself, of course. There's the Lanawer. So now I've got seven back in hand again. I'm passing the turn probably. So this is a great start for me. But now, of course, Yoop has enough mana to cast an Urnum or to cast a Sarah Angel. Are we going to see a Sarah Angel here? Ooh, there's a the Sarah. That is not great. Taking two points of damage. So I need to try to find a control magic. And then, of course, I need to find the mana to play it out. So again, I'm on nine cards. So I'm winning in the card advantage department. But next turn, I'm going to take six damage if I don't find a solution for the creatures here. Playing another forest, not finding a blue source. Playing a Lanawer Elves, seven in hand. That is not great. And passing the turn. Also no land uh, destruction from my side, by the way. No crumble or ice storm. An ice storm on the trop would be quite good. There's the attack for six. Drawing an extra card first to kind of see my options. I am playing with one giant growth, but I'm not sure if I want to use it in this uh, scenario. So blocking one of the launderers, taking five, dropping to 12. Untapping again. And look at that, Yoop also played a Mistress Factory, so a lot of pressure here on my life. Finding a Mox Sapphire. If I have an Islet now and hopefully a Control Magic, I can steal the Sarah Angel, that would be ideal. 
But here we can really see what, what Jupe's deck wants to do, right? Ramp up very quickly, get out a big creature, and now I'm, uh, I'm in trouble, even though I've got that Loa. Looks like I'm using my Loa main phase here, so I guess I've got another play. Tapping three, casting an Ice Storm, probably on, yeah, in this case on the factory. Because I'm already on 12, I don't want to take extra damage. Under normal circumstances, if my life total would have been higher or it would have had a good blocker, I would have definitely taken out the Tropical Island. Ooh, look at that. This is tough, taking care of the Sapphire. The problem here is, remember, I keep talking about the Control Magic because that's my best solution. But now he's taking care of my Mox Sapphire. So I'm one step further away from the potential Control Magic. I think I'm now at seven again. Gonna tap two, okay, gonna play a regrowth on the Sapphire. What am I gonna do? I haven't had a land drop yet. Looks like I'm a little bit in the tank, so why did I take the Sapphire? Do I maybe have an Ancestral Recall? Or maybe I have an Island and the Sapphire and a Control Magic. There's a Tropical Island. Look at that, using the Loa, I'm going to go back up to 8, it seems. Now I'll drop the Sapphire. And there's probably the Control Magic. Yep, taking care of the Sarah. Oh, Disenchant! Oh, that is painful. I needed this Control Magic to stick. This is a big problem for me. Not quite sure how many cards Joop has in hand, by the way. It looks like he's top decking, so at least that's something attacking me here. Gonna go to 2. Oh man, and it looks like my camera, okay, it's zooming in again, is it? It was a little bit blurry. I need to find an answer for the Sarah. So, I mean, I've had an active Loa since the start of the game, but the pressure is just too much. Can I find an answer here? Already lost the regrowth. Tapping four mana. Okay, this is an Icy. What am I doing here? Tapping the Sarah. Oh, do I have a Meek Stone? Changing my mind though. I'm going to pass the turn and now I'm going to tap the... Okay, I'm going to play the Meek Stone first. I'm still in my main. Okay, now I understand. So I wanted to tap the Sarah and the Meek Stone, but it's uh, better to play it in this way, because if I would have tapped it in my own main, if then Yoop would have had a disenchant, he could have disenchanted the Meek Stone, and the Sarah would untap. So look at this. Almost dead, but not yet. Blocking the Lana Rails, trading it. I'm on two. There's an Ice Storm on the Library of Alexandria. But now it's looking good for me, because remember, I've got five cards in hand, now going up to six, and Yoop only has one card in hand, and he only has that one Sarah Angel that's tapped because of the Meek Stone. Tapping three green, another Ice Storm. So really taking care of business, attacking here is Blue Source. Do I have another Ice Storm? There's a Tim. It's looking really good. I am taking a little bit of a risk here. Because if he would have had a disenchant, he could have disenchanted the Meek Stone, and then I wouldn't have had enough mana to tap it down with the Icy. Two cards in hand for my opponent. And that Sarah Angel that's tapped down by the Meek Stone. I'm on two life. This is pretty spectacular. I mean, Yoop's still on 20, but remember, in his main 60, I don't believe there's any direct damage. So if he can uh, keep control, there's another Tim. If I can find a Living Plane... It is risky though. Looks like I'm gonna play something else. Tapping two. There's a Simbat. I'm gonna pass the turn. Tapping nothing down. That's interesting. Maybe I should have tapped down the Soul Ring. Choosing not to. Pinging him for one. Yup is passing the turn. Three cards in hand. He does have that Loa, of course. So maybe his strategy is to wait until he's up to seven, but then again, I'm sure if he finds a disenchant, he's gonna disenchant one of the two artifacts. Tapping four, are we gonna see a living plane? 
Let it be a living plane, living plane. Now this is what I want to do. All the lands turn into one, one creatures. I can now kill two lands with my Tim. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And now I can use my soul ring, uh, sorry, my IC to tap down his soul ring. That's what I should do here. So in his upkeep, I'm tapping down the soul ring. And that's it. You'd be saying you've got this one. There's no way out because what's going to happen next is I'm going to kill. Yeah, he's looking forward. I mean, a mox maybe could have saved him, but it would have been really, really tough. So Yoop losing this first game after putting me on two. I really thought I was toast, but just in time I was able to stabilize with Icy and Meekstone. Man, this is good. This is good for my confidence in this deck. Anyway, we're both going to go and um, sideboard and then we'll catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So one game up, that means Yoop gets to start here, starting with the Lunar Elves. And I was thinking a little bit about this matchup. It is, of course, very unfortunate for Yoop. He's got a lot of one toughness creatures that I can, of course, shoot down with my Trike and with my Timmy. So that is difficult here for him. Starting with the Forest. And a Mock Sapphire. There's a Soul Ring, so very explosive start. And there's a Sylvan Library. So Sylvan, of course, a card from Legends that's going to allow me to look at the top three cards in my draw step, put them in any order, and then draw my card for turn. If I want to draw an extra card, it can pay four life for that, and I can draw two cards max. Look at this! Yoop doing what he wants to do. This is what his deck wants. Remember, first game with an early Sarah. Now he's going to early earn him. And I mean, in game one, I was fortunate enough to have my Library of Alexandria getting a lot of cards. Now at least I've got my Sylvan. But can I afford to pay extra life. It looks like I'm not. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to stick on 20. Can I find another control magic? Okay, Ancestral Recall. That's pretty good. So I am finding some powerful cards here that hopefully can help me. Tapping a green, probably for a Lanawar Elves. Okay, there's a Lanawar Elf. Surprisingly, no land removal from my part because I'm also playing with four Ice Storms and of course uh, Crumble. Playing out this lonely Lanawar Elves. I guess it can block the Urnum because 4 life equals a card. There's a Strip Mine. Okay, so I am gonna take care of a land there. Taking care of the city. And passing the turn. So I wonder what I'm gonna do. Am I gonna chump block? Because if I block the Urnum, like I said, because of the Sylvan, it's, it's basically a card. So that's exactly what I'm doing. So I'm dropping to 19. Ooh, and then I play a Psionic Blast. This is great. So one damage was already on the Urnum. Taking four extra, killing the Urnum Jin. This is great for me. I'm on 17. Looking at the top three cards. Again, just drawing one. Playing an Island. Tapping a green and two. There's an ice storm. Okay, now I'm really doing what my deck wants to do. After the strip mine and the ice storm. And also Yoop, I believe, missed a land drop. Ooh, is finding a factory. That is a little bit unfortunate for me because he can then up the pressure a little bit. I'm on 16. Gonna untap, look at the top three cards. I need to find a solution here. I wonder if I boarded in extra control magics. I'm taking an extra card, going down to 12. And there's another Ice Storm, of course, taking care of the factory. That's really good news for me. Playing a City of Brass and passing the turn. Two cards in hand, it seems. So now Yoop is in a situation where he's got more cards than me, but he doesn't have the lands to play them out. He's got, of course, two mana. The Mox Ruby and, of course, the Lana where else can generate a green. So if he finds a Sylvan, he can actually play it out. There's a Living Plane. Am I... Ooh, do I also have a Tim, perhaps? Attacking with two here. Going to put Jupe on 17. So things are really looking up for me in this match. There's another Lana where Elves. Remember, all the lands are now 1-1s. 
But I mean, you're still on 17. I've got a long way to go, though. If I can find a Tim, I can start shooting off the Lanora Elves. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm exactly. Just attacking with a forest and an island. I really got to think how to use my mana here. And Yoop taking two points of damage. Playing an island. So that one has summoning sickness. One card in hand, though. There's a strip mine. Remember, the strip mine also has summoning sickness. It's now just a 1 1. Next turn, he can start use it to destroy a land. I'm, I don't think he's gonna, though. He probably wants to keep because now he's got enough mana next turn to play a potential Urnum. Tapping three. Okay, here's a Tim. This is what I've been waiting for. If this Tim can survive, so if Yoop doesn't draw into white because he needs his white sources to um, to cast uh, Swords to Plowshares, attacking here with three lands. Look at that. He's blocking everything. Acknowledging the power of the Tim here. I think I think he can't win this. Because remember, his City of Brass has Summoning Sickness. I can ping him down. Wow, this is great. This is great to see my deck work like this. I wish it worked as well every single time. That would be awesome. Going to go to 10 here. What am I going to do next? Oh, just attacking with those lands as well. So he's going to go down to 12. And attacking again. Going to go to 9. Going to put him on 9 as well. Going to play a Trop with Summoning Sickness past the turn. And of course, I'm going to keep the Tim untapped. End of turn, ping him for one with the Tim. Now I can attack him for four. Put him on four. And I think here you can see Yoop already changing the life total. So he's on four and I'm going to pass. Or am I? Do I have another land to play? All those lands are now little soldiers that I can attack with. Looks like I'm not. Three cards in hand, pass. I think the only thing that can save him here, well, he's dead now anyway, but the only thing that could have saved him was a Mox Pearl and a Balance. So uh, anyway, it is over here. So wow, that is a 2-0 victory. But don't worry, we did play a game number three. So let's go to the game number three and, and actually see if Yoop's able to beat this awesome deck of mine. And yes, I'm getting a little cocky. That's true. <laughs> but it's amazing. It's amazing. Game number three. Here we go. So the bonus game. So winning the first two games, super happy. Oh, look at this. Now, that's always the case, right? If you play that third game, then your opponent is going to start with the Loa. This is a great start for him, of course. Library of Alexandria. I'm just starting with a basic island. He's drawing a lot of cards. Are we going to see some mox action? No, we're not. Just playing a, a planes. Passing the turn. Okay, Ancestral Recall. Fair enough. Fair enough. Going to dig a little deep. I am surprised I'm playing this in my main. Maybe I don't have any lands in hand. Hoping to use my Ancestral Recall to find some lands. Oh, I got a discard. Oh, that is rough. That is really rough. Oh, look at what I'm going to discard here. This is pain, pure pain. I think I remember this hand. I think I had an Ancestral Recall and a Blue Mana in hand. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I can dig three cards deep and I'm on the draw. I'm probably going to find some land. Now, guess what happened? I didn't find any land. So, <laughs> oh, this is painful. So to crumble here. Oh, man. Well, I guess, I guess, you know, I've spent all my luck in those first two games, and now I gotta pay for that or something. Let's look what Yoop can do here. Starting with the Ruby, of course, drawing an extra card again with the Loa. Oh, is he now gonna play an Ice Storm? That will be brutal. That will be so brutal. Okay, there's the untap though. Okay, so he is giving me kind of a chance here. Hopefully I can find a land or a Mox or a Soul Ring or just something. I mean, maybe a forest into Lanora Elves, that would be great. No, discarding more cards. Psionic Blast here. <sighs> this is tough. I mean, I can't complain after those first two games. They were like beautiful for me, but I mean, this is just a slaughterhouse. Discarding another card here. Okay, this is... Sorry, guys. I'm always trying to show you good games, but this game number three... No mana, so 
Gonna go down here to 16. There's a Sarah Angel. Oh, man. At least finding another island here. That's something. It is a beautiful beta signed one. So that's good. But um, yeah. Remember, I already had to discard my control magics earlier. This is like horrible. No, strip mine. Oh. Taking eight. I guess I deserve this after... Oh, there's an ice storm. Oh, man. Look at that. My board's empty. My opponent has... Yeah, that's it. Super, super short game number three. Uh, look at my hand there. All I needed was... Well, all I needed, but at least one green source from that Ancestral Recall in turn two would have helped me so much. I would have been able to play Lanora Elves with a little bit of luck into another Lanora doing the Sylvan. I'm kind of showing it now and, and hopefully be able to play out my control magics. One of the things I've done is I boarded in extra control magics after game one, seeing that his deck is pretty creature heavy. You know, it's just beautiful to steal one of his early uh, creature threats, you know, that he's been doing in every single game, right? I could steal his, his Urnum or, or Sarah Angel. Anyway, um, it happens. I'm still super happy because I won this matchup and I didn't expect to win this matchup. So thank you very much, Yoop, for, uh, for this game, of course. And it's always a pleasure to play against your beautiful Urnum on Ice Deck. Also, thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And please let me know uh, what you think about the uh, the deck. I would love to hear from you if you have maybe some advice. I am not planning to add red. I just really want to keep it blue and green. I know it makes it vulnerable to red, but I'm just gonna, gonna live with that and uh, probably just gonna board in my blue elemental blasts if I play against a red deck and try to protect, you know, um, what's happening on the board as, as best as I can against the direct damage. Anyway, this was the episode for today. Before you go, please take a moment to subscribe and ring that bell. If you're not subscribed already, of course, if you are, then please take a moment to like, share and comment. All these things are completely free and they really help the channel move forward. So I would highly appreciate it if you could take a moment to do that. And then there's one last thing you can do, and that is become a sponsor of the show via patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. For $1 a month, you can join the Timmy the Timmy's, the Timmy ship, the Timmy boat, however you want to call it, the pirate ship, I guess. Um, you know, and you can help me make more content and keep the channel afloat. So please consider becoming a patron. There's probably an uh, info card popping up right now. If you click on that card, that will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And one of the perks is that your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every video. Also in this one, also in this one. Let's take a look at the end scroll. Ich <laughs>